Hello, hello, it's me, Jeanette. How are you? Hope you've been well. In today's video, I wanted to share my first official mixed media process video. And mixed media is honestly a new territory for me. I've done layouts before in the past where I've used like watercolor and paper and kind of did a little bit of collaging and used a white gel pen, but that was the extent of the experimenting. And if you saw my last video, which was a journal flip through, I recently got some gesso and stencils and texture paste. So I've been playing with them and getting used to them. And it's been a very messy process. So anywho, let's get to the process video. So to start, I'm working in my mixed media journal, which I'll have linked below. And the pages are really thick and they're meant to be for either watercolor, acrylic paints, and I guess all the mediums. But yeah, I probably should have primed my page with gesso, but I really didn't know what I was going to do. I was just kind of going with the flow. So as you can see, I used a acrylic stamp block to create a rough border with my $5 watercolor palette that I got at Michael's before I moved and my trusty dusty water brush. And I'm also drying my watercolor with my Ranger heated tool. And that just helps with the drying, speeding up, speeds up the drying process. What am I trying to say? Sorry. Next, I'm taking a stamp, which I got off of a magazine that I got at work, and I'm creating a sort of random background. And I didn't get a clear impression on that one uh, stamp right there. <laughs> I was actually really shocked by it because I could have sworn that I felt the stamp make contact <laughs> with the page. So I was really surprised about that. But anyway, I guess the notebook rings got in the way, but that's okay because I'm gonna cover it up later. And I guess in retrospect, I should have just like stamped over it again, but I didn't wanna have overlapping stamps, but I ended up having overlapping stamping. And so yeah, anyway, overlapping stamping is very hard to say. Overlapping stamping, overlapping stamping, overlapping stamping. Let me know if that was hard for you to say. I would love to know. <laughs> so here I grabbed my scrap stash, which I keep uh, in a clear document holder. And I really do need to get either a bigger one or an extra one because I'm running out of room. But I will have one linked for you below in case you want to know what I'm talking about. But all I'm doing is ripping scraps of paper that I have, strips of paper, that I think coordinate with the direction that I want my layout to go. And that kind of sounds funny, but I'm trying to just completely go with the flow. But at the same time, I also know that I wanted to create a layout that was more like less colorful with less, um, less bold colors, softer colors. So that's what I was doing there. And once I have my strips, I'm arranging them in a way that kind of makes sense to me. Does that make sense? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm like real, I don't know what's going on with today's video. I'm just having a hard time describing things, but that's just the best way that I can explain it. But yeah, sorry about that. Let's move on. Here I'm taking my glue, glue stick, sorry, and trying to glue everything back the way that I had it. And sometimes I take a picture on my phone just quickly if I wanna like recreate the exact precise position of things. But since I wasn't, um, I wasn't too worried about too worried about it. So I had a rough idea and I skipped on the picture and I'm just gluing things down. And at this point I was gonna try to use the gesso to glue the stuff down, but it was reacting to my watercolor, which I didn't realize that gesso would do. So I decided to just use my glue stick, but I guess you learn something new every day. And I'm sure there's some cool medium that I can put on top of my watercolor so that it doesn't react to my gesso. So I'm going to have to look that up or if you want to share, if you know exactly what I need so that that doesn't happen again, that would be amazing too. So let me know in the comments below. Earlier I mentioned that the stamp that I used for my background was from a magazine that I got at work. And in case you don't know, I got a new job a few months ago at a UK craft magazine publisher, a local magazine publisher and their sister store Craft Stash. And I will be talking more about that in some upcoming videos because mostly my job is making cards. And I've never done an official card tutorial video for my YouTube channel, for my for this YouTube channel. I don't think that I have, but I've been making cards full time, basically 40 hours a week for the past two years as my day job, first at Sizzix and then now at Craft Stash. And I do enjoy card making so much, but when I come home, I don't wanna make more cards. I wanna journal and create fun snail mail and work on my planner or my traveler's notebook. 
So that's why I've never made a card video before, but I hope to change that in the future. I actually would love to know how you feel about card making. Is it something that you've tried? Do you enjoy it? Do you know, like maybe you haven't tried it because you don't know where to start? Let me know in the comments below if you have a moment. I would love to hear your thoughts on card making. And now the more that I think about it, I think that I do want to start making some easy handmade card video tutorials just because it's such a great skill to have to be able to just whip out a card that doesn't take you too long to make that looks nice if you need one for like any occasion like a birthday or Christmas or yeah. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so back to the video. Sorry for that rabbit trail, friends. I wanted to mention that the musical sheets that I'm using, they're from a music book that I got at a used bookstore. And it's always something that I keep an eye on when I go through it to a thrift shop or an antique shop or a charity shop and also old maps or atlases. So music books, maps, atlases, or just vintage books with cool drawings inside. I have um, a book that is in storage back home of flower anatomy and the art in it is amazing. And I never cut it up, I just kept it. And I like used to like to look through it to get inspiration because it's just so beautiful. But yeah, keep an eye out for things like that when you go to those types of shops, just because you can always use them for embellishments, backgrounds, or collages in your paper crafts. Now I'm taking some white acrylic paint and putting it on my stamping block. Since I don't have an official art palette, maybe I should get one. But yeah, I wanted to mute some of the brighter colors on my layout with the white paint because I felt like the white paint just tones everything down a bit and also it gives it like a rough painterly look. I just love the look of brush strokes. Does that make sense? And now I'm gonna add some sparkle to my layout because you know that I love sparkle and I'm gonna be adding, sprinkling just a few gold sequins here and there. And I'm gonna be using some liquid adhesive to glue them down. And then at the end, I'm gonna just tone down the brightness of the sequins a little bit with a dab of white paint. So here's my layout all done and I'm really happy with it because I was able to use a lot of my scraps and I know that I have a lot to learn still when it comes to mixed media, but that's okay because the learning process is turning out to be really fun, a little messy, but super fun. And I'm happy to share that with you guys. Well, that's it for today, friends. And if you'd like to see more of my crafty projects, then please follow me on Instagram at Jeanette Lane blog, or you can head to my blog, JeanetteLane.com. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye.